Aloha Mai Kako, a combo by the curtain call from a distance, a program of reviews, previews, interviews, and features of and or with the great art and artists on Maui and beyond. I'm Paul Janes Brown, and I'm coming to you from my home office, where I have been conscientiously practicing self-isolation. Finding Ohana is an adventure, coming-of-age love story on multiple levels, thriller, and cultural awareness film all rolled into terrific performances of fully engaging screenplay, entertaining flashbacks, fun animations, and a celebration of Hawaii's beauty in a top-quality cinematic package with a marvelous score. Here is the trailer. This is it. This is where the queen wanted us to go. What do you think's down there? I just want to grab my sister who thinks she's Indiana Jones. We'll get them. My kids are inside a mountain looking for some Spanish gold. I have to enter. I mean, no disrespect. Your turn. What's up, Mountain? You looking beautiful right now. You're good. We can go now. We just have to go through. The jaws of death. That sounds inviting. Oh! oh. See? He's the okay. Don't move. Why does it have so many eyes? Those aren't eyes. I know you're scared, but I'll be right here the whole time. I gotta do this for Papa. Run! Hayley, come on! Hurry! One, two, three! I'm not as strong as I look. I only went to one CrossFit class. It was a free trial. Shut up! The film opens with a reckless race on BMX bikes along the East River near the Queensboro Bridge. Peely, the fearless 13-year-old Honolulu native Kea Peahu, is racing to win a treasure hunt. Although she wins, she is not able to get the prize because her mother, Leilani, the entrancing Kelly Hu, tells she and her brother, Iwani, the perfectly obnoxious Alex Alono, they are going to Hawaii to see their grandfather, Kimo, the transcendently wonderful Maui man, Branscombe Richmond, because he has had a heart attack and needs them. Needless to say, this is not good news to either of the kids, especially Peely, because now she is not able to enjoy her prize, a trip to a geocaching camp. Although both siblings are Hawaiian, they were raised in Brooklyn, and they have that New York attitude, which doesn't blend very well with Hawaii, as Iwani finds out when he meets Hana, the mesmerizing Lindsay Watson. Let's just say she does not share his attraction. Peely is the curious sort, and she figures out how to get into her grandfather's studio, an old hippie school bus straight out of Woodstock, and there she discovers a ship's log from an early 19th century Spanish ship's quartermaster named Monks, Ricky Garcia. Now, this is where the film does some pretty cool stuff. It lapses into an animation as Peely reads it, and then it goes into a full-on recreation of the flashback. Later, when Iwani is translating his, shall we say, colloquialisms, are taken on by the triumvirate of Monks, Robinson, Mark Evan Jackson, and Brown, Chris Parnell. It is a funny moment in a film that has everything. Pathos, near tragedy, drama, excitement, redemption, and love. Romantic, familial, and cultural. It is interesting that they land on Oahu in 1823, and it appears to be deserted. However, at that time, they would have been greeted by hundreds of canoes. Also, the crew members all have English names, but the ship and Monk's Log are supposed to be in Spanish. A small quibble, but it's a feature, not a documentary. Peely, who speaks Spanish because everyone thought she was Puerto Rican, so she decided to learn Spanish, learns about the treasure her grandfather's log hides from her new friend, Casper, the very holly Owen Vaccaro. And she is determined to find it so she can save her grandfather from losing his home and the land that has been in the family since Hawaiians came from Tahiti. She and Kimo bond, and he decides to take her to see some of the places in the log. When they get ready to go, Peely is hesitant because she has to go into the sea to get into the boat. She reveals that she cannot swim. Kimo is incredulous about a non-swimming Hawaiian. When they get to the island, Peely wants to verify a sighting she has made with the doubloon Kimo wears, and despite his protestations to the contrary, she starts to climb to get a better vantage. Kimo, concerned for her safety, follows, loses his footing, falls, and ends up in the hospital. The film then transforms into a mix of Indiana Jones, Lost, 
Jurassic Park, and Goonies as Peely indefatigably follows the clues in the log to search for the lost treasure. Does she find it? Will they save the family homestead? Will Hannah and Iwani reconcile? Go to Netflix to find out. I guarantee not only will you not be disappointed, but you will also not see where the film is going. It is terrific. Kea Peahu as Peely is spunky, courageous, and driven. Her energy level is somewhere between the Energizer Bunny and a nuclear power plant. She is in control of every scene she is in, and her presence is commanding far beyond her 13 years on this planet. Branscombe Richmond's chemo is at first a bitter, angry father to his daughter, Leilani, and a curmudgeonly granddad. But he takes us on a transformational journey. His scene with Miss Who, where they po'oponopono in the hospital, is powerful and instructive. I recommend you bring some tissues. If you don't need them for this scene, check to make sure you still have a heart. His effort to introduce his grandchildren to the culture is both charming and heartwarming. I am not familiar with everything Mr. Richmond has done over his career, but I doubt there has been a better part for him. Kelly Hu as Leilani brings the right balance of desperation, care, love, and motherliness to this role. When she tells her kids to ho'oponopono, it will be an instructive moment for the young ones in the audience. We feel the situation she is in and the difficulty of the choices she is confronting. Alex Alono is the quintessential big brother, and his relationship with Miss Piahu captures the sibling rivalry, protectiveness, mentorship, and ultimately love between them. As Hana, Lindsay Watson, goes from being repulsed by Iwani's mainland ways to being seduced by his warm heart and bravery. Mr. Ficaro, who is 15 years old and has been acting since he was nine, is like Tonto to Miss Peahu's masked man. He is there for her in every way possible, almost like deus ex machina. After 12 years in television directing, Jude Wang makes an auspicious feature film debut with Finding Ohana. This is a complex film with multiple storylines and locations in Hawaii, New York City, and Thailand, which could get lost in the hands of a less adept director, but Ms. Wang handles them like a master juggler and delivers what the writer, Christina Strain, who was also making her feature film debut, must be most pleased with. The cinematography by Court Fay is spectacular. He doesn't miss an opportunity to present the unparalleled beauty of Hawaii. And thanks to cinematic sorcery of George Lucas's Industrial Light and Magic, there are some wizardly enchanting visions for one's amazement. The musical score by Joseph Trapanese captures both the Hawaiian culture and the thrill of the moments. There is a particularly excellent number when the quartet of Miss Peahu, Master Vaccaro, Mr. Alono, and Ms. Watson do an a cappella version of Megan Trainer's All the Ways, and you will hear Maui's own Kalani Pea doing Hey Lei Aloha, No Hilo. This film is rated PG, but it is a family film. There's not an F bomb in it, and the situations, especially when it goes underground, will be both scary and fun for the kids. Ultimately, Finding Ohana is about the discovery of who one really is and what family means. As Hana says to Awani, when he asks her about her reluctance to go to Juilliard, quote, I'm scared of New York making me uncomfortable of who I am, unquote. The film is currently ranked in the Netflix top 10. It's too bad it's not in the cinema. It really belongs on the big screen. Don't miss it. Well, that's Curtain Call from a Distance for this week. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Paul James Brown. Ahui ho. <laughs>